thing. But let, let's take the listeners through a tour, in a sense, I think, of human love from attraction to discernment to dating to marriage to all, all that. Maybe just starting with attraction. I know I talked to a lot of people who struggle with like wondering, you know, oh, is this attraction a sin? You know, what is going on there? Maybe can you share with us what John Paul says about attraction and then Specifically, at what point does a sexual attraction become sinful? Because I think a lot of people think it's a sin to feel the attraction. Because you could you maybe help us look at this issue through the lens of John Paul II of attraction and when sexual attractions become a sin. Yeah. Well, let's first just tackle attraction itself, you know, because God made us this way. We're wired to be attracted to the opposite sex. Uh, John Paul II calls this uh, that what human persons have is the sexual urge. Uh, which is something different than just what animals have, where they act on instinct. So uh, in, in human persons, we're, we're wired to be attracted to the opposite sex in two main ways. Uh, we have a physical attraction that he calls sensuality. So that's just what everybody knows. You're attracted to her good looks, you know, you know, those sexy legs or whatever. You know, you're just attracted to the body. It's a physical attraction to the physical features, the bodily, the body of the other person. Uh, but he also talks about a second kind of attraction. He calls this a psychological, uh, we're attracted to the psychological qualities of the other person. Uh, this is a, a more emotional, or se- he calls it sentimentality. It's an emotional attraction to the, the, the psychological features of the other person, most particularly what JP2 describes it as the femininity of the woman or the, the masculinity of the man. You know, it's like the, the mystery of the opposite sex. So there's, we know that in attractions, there's always something more than physical going on, right? I mean, there could be a guy at a coffee house and he's sipping on his coffee and a beautiful girl walks in, boom, he's immediately attracted, you know? But, you know, let's say he's, you know, seen her here before with her friends uh, at this time, which is why he's here again at this time, because <laughs> you know, he wants to see her again. And and, and he notices her her warm smile, her, her joyful personality, and she's really outgoing, whatever it is. There's something more than just the physical looks that we're attracted to. And JP2 says both of these things are good. When you notice you've got that physical attraction towards someone or an emotional attraction towards someone, that's, you know, just applaud and say, I'm a human being. That's awesome. You know, God wired us this way. Um, but when it comes, when it falls into a kind of um, something that's sinful, is when we we focus on the the qualities themselves and what we get out of them. You see, because John Paul II, I want to make sure everybody gets this, is that while everybody has what he calls sexual value, that's the you know the physical appearance and the psychological qualities. We all have sexual value, but deep down, more than that, we all have just value as a human person. Like I like like. My wife is beautiful, but she's beautiful more than just her physical good looks, you know, and she's more than her psychological qualities. It's her soul. It's her character. It's her virtue. That's who she is. She has value as a a, a daughter of God made in the image and likeness of God, you know, so that's the core of who we are. And we don't notice that. Like, you don't walk down in the downtown of a big city and go, wow, look, there's a beautiful soul. No, you just go, no, there's a really good looking girl, (laughs) you know? So you notice the physical qualities and the psychological qualities first. But the danger is when we reduce the person to just those qualities that I, I might admire, but I start to, I get some pleasure from it. So I can look at this other person, I see their good looks, and that's fine. But I can then start kind of just in, in my mind, imagining, you know, having a fanta- sexual fantasy with this person. And I'm, I'm focusing just on their physical appearance and the pleasure that I derive in thinking about them or staring at them. That's called lust. And that's called use. I'm just using the person. I'm not really interested in the person at that point. I'm more interested in just what pleasure do I get out of them? That, that, that sexual feeling I get when I, when I'm admiring their, their, their good looks. So that's, that's when you're starting to fall into, into sin. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think of an analogy, um, about the story of Bathsheba and David in the Bible. Could, could I share a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, Jason? yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think that that's a great way of thinking. Like when it comes to lustful thoughts, like how do I know it's really falling into sin. So this famous story you can read about in First Samuel, uh, it describes uh, King David, who happens to wake up one day and he, he looks out you know, his window and he happens to see this beautiful girl bathing. Now, he didn't necessarily seek it out. It kind of just happened. It wasn't like he was planning this. He just happened to notice it. So like you see a beautiful girl bathing, you might notice something, you know, like, like that's, you know, there, there's no sin there. But what David does is he doesn't, what he should do is just turn away. <laughs> he should just run away at that moment, right? But what he does, he kind of goes, oh, wow, 
beautiful girl naked. <laughs> and he starts looking a little more. And then what starts happening inside of him is there's this attraction to just this body. He's not really interested in who she is. She doesn't really know who she is. He, he's just interested in her body, starting to have a lustful imagination about her. That's when you're starting to fall into sin. And, and I think what John Paul II brings out is there's this this kind of gray area in between. Of I, you know, I'm driving down the highway. I see a billboard of a you know girl in a bikini. I didn't plan that. It's just there. I notice it. That's not sin. But if I just keep driving and I keep looking at that bikini and I start remembering the little girl in the bikini, and now I'm starting to like give in to sin. But then that area in between, the key is this. Like maybe I, I look away. I don't want to look. I don't want to look at that billboard. So I drive by. But I have the image in my head. So I keep thinking about that girl. The image of the girl in the bikini keeps coming in my head. And I go, I don't want it there. And I'm resisting. And I, I know maybe I say a Hail Mary. Uh, I tell the Lord, you know, I say, Jesus, I say the Jesus prayer. Or, I, you know, I keep trying to distract myself. I'm really fighting against that that image of the bikini in my head. And, you know, like John Paul II says, you're, you're battling still. That's not sin. It's when I start, I just give up and I say, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just, I remember that image of the girl in the bikini. I'm just gonna keep thinking about it. I'm gonna allow myself to ponder this and have a sexual fantasy about this. That, like when I, once I stop resisting, that's kind of like the fine line of now I've fallen into to sin. Uh, and and I and again, I think JP2 is so beautiful how he, you know, is very human. He acknowledges, look, you're gonna have sexual attraction. You may notice things that just happen spontaneously. You didn't plan. Don't you're human. That that's not that's that's ordinary. And then you may even have to battle and you're resisting, you're trying to fight. As long as you are still resisting, it's it, you haven't fallen into sin. But it's when you give up resistance and you just say, I'm just gonna enjoy this. That whether it's a lustful thought, it's looking at an image on the screen, something you do with your girlfriend, you know, whatever that is, once you stop resisting, yeah. that's when you know you're, you've fallen into sin. Yeah. So in a sense, grasping, you know, once you get to that point of consuming taking, using, you know, then, then it becomes the sin, you know, and something I often tell the guys in terms of resistance, in, in a sense, I think part of the conflict is being caused because you think that the answer to her body is no, when the answer to the body is like, yes, I mean, she need you should respond in love. And so not using her in your imagination is an act of love. You know, maybe pausing and praying for whoever that woman is, is an act yeah. of love. And so make sure that you're understanding that you're not rejecting sexuality, you're not rejecting the goodness of the sexual value of the body. You're just trying to order those desires. I think it was interesting with um, David and Bathsheba. You know, you read between the lines there. You know, he didn't wake up in the morning. Like he woke up from from. He was in the afternoon. He was napping <laughs> in the afternoon. And it also says like at the time of the year when the kings would go off to war with their armies, like he's home napping and walking around on the rooftop. And so like idleness in a sense was the ground in which he, he found himself in temptation. That's not to mean that any temptation was, it's like partly your fault, you're idle. I mean, they're going to come, but man, how many more come, you know, when we're idle. And so I think that's helpful in terms of understanding, you know, at that, what point does that become sin? It's only through the door of consent because the devil can bang on the door all day long, but it's not until we let him in through our consent, not by what we feel, but, but how we respond that it becomes a sin. So, so let, let's say experience that attraction. You know, you're, you're battling your temptations and you know, you meet someone nice. You want to enter into that relationship. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip. But if you want to see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we want to invite you to help us share this message. And there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. We release videos every single day and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at patreon.com slash Jason Everett. That helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless. Thank you.